Do. And Pat Sharp's mullet. Michael Douglas has been hunting down the perpetrator of the most heinous hair crime known to mankind. Tonight, it's arguably the greatest crime in hair history, the mullet. Well, what do you think? <laughs> its popularity was incomprehensible. Sported by the England World Cup squad of 1986 and brandished by pop stars, this short on the top and long at the back number was guaranteed to make most people look, well, ridiculous. But lordy lordy, it was popular in the 80s. I've had tons of terrible hairstyles, me. I mean, take a look at that. Mixture between Leo Sayer and Mick Hucknall. But I have never had a mullet. But millions of men and women did. So who is the guilty hairdresser? I'm on a mission to find out. But first, I'm going to recreate a real live mullet. This here is Alex. Now, as you can see, his hair is a little bit short, so I'm going to use the help of my little furry friend here. You're all right about this, aren't you? Yeah. I'm huh? going to go for it. So the principles of the mullet are quite simple. It needs to be short at the sides, long at the back, and the top, well, you can do a few things with the top. A bit bouffant. I mean, that might be quite nice, might not it? Oh, maybe he's no Romeo. Well, Alex, the real judge is the public, so let's go and find out what they think. Come on. Would you ever date a guy with a mullet? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's horrible. Well, what's horrible about it? And everything. Would you ever consider having a mullet yourself? <laughs> Me? I come from South Africa. Quite a few people still wear it there. It's is it your there. fault? Yeah. No. <laughs> the mullet mysteriously sprang up across the world at around the same time, but one man personified this dubious barnet more than any other. The original king of the mullet, Pat Sharp. It's probably quite a compliment to be remembered for something. It was just a bit of a strange haircut, but probably suited the time, Mike, really. I guess it just felt like part of, of what was going on. It was. If you didn't have that kind of look, you were out of place. You had mm -hmm. to have that kind of look. I won some awards for worst haircut <laughs> on the Smash Hits Awards. Thank you very much. It's amazing to win something once, but to win it twice is a real pleasure. But no cutting remarks. Well, uh, what year did you have it? probably started to grow it about 85 when I was doing a lot of work in Norway and a lot of the Norwegian guys had that kind of, they call it hockey hair there, it's like a vi Viking sort of look and I okay. kind of adopted it. Who was responsible for creating your hairdo? I know a hairdresser in, uh, in hop salons in Mill Hill and I used to go to Kim. Okay. And she literally crafted the mullet into the shape that it became, so Kim's yeah. responsible, yeah. So Kim, she is the guilty hairdresser. Yeah, yeah. Kim has long since hung up her scissors, but she's never been able to forget Pat Sharp's hair. So Kim, did you create the mullet? I obviously was quite responsible for it. It was a split decision between me and Pat. Yeah. And uh, we just went for it. Cut into the front and uh -huh. highlight it loads, leave it long at the back. A kind of business at the front, party at the back. Completely disconnected haircut. And has anyone ever come in asking for a Pat Sharp? There's only one Pat Sharp. There's only one mullet that looks like that. Is she guilty? I'm not sure. But 25 years on, will one of them take the blame for that mullet? It's, good, uh, great. it's great to see you two reunited like this, but I have one burning question. I mean, did you ask for it or did you give it to him? Whatever he asked for, I gave him. A bit of both, I think. <laughs> It was all your decision, was it? I just went to my hairdresser to have a haircut because it was getting a bit long. That was it. And the rest is history. history.